It is that time. It is noon and good afternoon, financial professionals, and welcome to another edition of The Brew, where we build relationships every week at E4 Insurance Services. My name is John Florence, if you haven't met me before, and I am both your host and your guest today, so doing double duty. Um, as usual, when we begin the brew, we usually start off talking about the national days. Uh, there's a couple of them that we want to commemorate today. Today is National Visit Your Relatives Day, which will be a little bit difficult for me because one of my relatives is in Switzerland, another one is in Costa Rica, and all the rest of them are in Arizona, and I'm here in Wisconsin, so uh, no visitation of my relatives. But if you have relatives nearby you, make sure you go out and visit with them today. Keep those family connections strong. Secondly, today is National Slushy Day. I don't have one of those either, but uh, it sure sounds pretty good. Maybe go out and get yourself an alcoholic one, like a daiquiri, frozen or frozen margarita, or maybe just a regular old slushy from your uh, local convenience store. And lastly, today is No Dirty Dishes Day. Um, it's No Dirty Dishes Day every day at my house. If any of you have ever had the uh, privilege of meeting my wife, and I'm a very lucky man to have married her, but she keeps a spick and span house. There are no dirty dishes ever. Uh, so every day is no dirty dishes day for me. On today's brew, I'm going to share with you a idea that I think is pertinent for most of the financial advisors that I have come across over my years in this business. And I call this idea the two birds and one stone idea. You may have already seen uh, some communications from E4 related to this idea, but I'm gonna explain it to you in a little bit of detail today. So let's get started. The, the idea behind this really is built around the concept of two uh, planning challenges that many, if not all, financial advisors face with their clients on a day in and day out basis. And that's what's represented by the two birds. And the stone itself is the solution or a solution that can be used to address these two challenges that I think many, many advisors are facing. So let's get into it and talk about the first bird. So the first bird is what we call non-qualified annuities. Um, if you've been in the business for any amount of time at all, you know that there's been an awful lot of non-qualified annuities sold over the year. Uh, we're pushing in excess of about $250 billion worth of annuities sold every year of all kinds. And if you really go back for the past 20 years, uh, and even taking into account growth of that time, we're looking at probably somewhere in the vicinity of about $2 trillion worth of existing non-qualified annuities that are out there in the marketplace in general. So pretty good chance that your clients have one or more of these kinds of contracts. Um, if you think also back about why people buy non or you know invest in non-qualified annuities, uh, it, particularly anything 20 years or later, it was typically related to tax deferral. And if you think about the market environment that we were in in the, you know, the early 20s after the, uh, the uh, dot-com burst, uh, we saw a really tremendous growth. People were concerned about paying taxes. So, so non-qualified annuities are really about a tax deferral play. A little bit later on, sort of beginning around 2006, 2007, insurance companies started launching non-qualified annuities with lifetime income benefits. And many clients bought those products there, knowing that at some future point, they may want to take a lifetime withdrawal benefit or annuitization benefit off of that non-qualified annuity. And so, so people bought them for various reasons. Now, what you typically see in a non-qualified annuity is something that looks like this. If you see on the screen, I'm showing just a very generic account. Uh, typically, somebody might have had $100,000 that they made an investment in in 2007. And that cost basis of 100,000 is represented by the blue line. And then if you look over time, what happens is, is those annuities have grown, particularly if they're variable annuities, taking advantage of the big run up after the great recession that we've seen sort of over the last 12, 13 years, 
to a point where many of those annuities are now sitting there with account values of $300,000 or more and having built up deferred gains of about 200,000, and in some cases, substantially more than that. So you look at that and say, well, what's the problem? Well, the problem is really a, you know, multiple things here. The first part of it is, is that if the client was in a non-qualified variable annuity, they are looking at some pretty substantial fees that have been charged against those, particularly if those are contracts that were bought with any kind of a benefit to them, a living benefit or an enhanced death benefit. Those clients might be paying in excess of three and a half, sometimes four, four and a half I've seen in terms of built-in expenses over time. And when you look at that over the prolonged period of the contract, those expenses are adding up tremendously. So that's one problem. But that's not really the biggest one. The biggest challenge for a lot of these old annuities is that the clients may have bought them with an idea of using a benefit, but that benefit is no longer needed or no longer desired. And if it's not desired in many of those contracts, you can't actually drop the benefit. So you're kind of stuck with this contract that's high cost with a benefit that they may or may not need or really have no plans of using in the future. And what that really leads to is the biggest problem at all of all of them, which is a massive deferred built up gain that becomes a tax bomb for beneficiaries down the line. And I have seen this in, in my work uh, with financial advisors throughout the years, time and time again. Now, again, you can look at that and say, which beneficiary is going to complain about receiving $300,000 from mom and dad? The problem isn't so much the receipt of the money as is the taxability of that money. And I like to show that by this little you know, piece of cake. Um, we all like cake. It's all enjoyable, but we prefer cake that have a really nice blend of cake and frosting in a situation of a non-qualified deferred annuity with a massive deferred gain inside of it, almost all of that cake is really frosting. And that isn't very pleasant. Most people don't want to deal with that, that particular problem when it comes down the line. So that's bird number one. Now let's talk a little bit about the second bird. The second bird or challenge that a lot of uh, planners and clients face is what I call the long-term care problem. And this is gonna be represented by a series of numbers that'll be easy for you to remember. First, let's start by talking about the number of Americans that are providing informal long-term care. And depending on the source that you look at, you're gonna find anywhere from 60 million to 70 million people currently providing care for friends or family uh, and helping them with their long-term needs. I know in our family, we're going through that right now as our parents are getting older. Um, after my mom passed away, my father in his late 80s needs some help. And that is falling on us as children to be able to provide that. What's the problem with that? Well, the problem is multiple. First of all, long-term care um, can be and providing that care can be a really difficult thing. Uh, it can be very physical work. It can be emotionally distressing. It can be financially distressing for people. And it's really pulling away from what the younger generation really needs to be doing, which is focusing on their own work and their own retirement and not spending so much of their energies uh, helping other people that need the care. Not to mention that there is just the, the, the quality of the care that gets provided informally is not necessarily as good as what you might get through professional care. Um, there have been a number of other long-term studies that have also indicated that people that are providing long-term care suffer from higher rates of depression, higher rates of alcohol and other substance abuse, really just creating a, a sort of lifestyle problem uh, that, that should be addressed. So we've got all these people providing informal care. Um, if we weren't going to do that, what would be the alternative? Well, the alternative would be to go and use professional long-term care. The challenge there, of course, is, is the cost of it is really, really substantial and increasing rapidly. Um, if you're not familiar with the site, I would really encourage any and all of you who are listening to go to uh, Genworth. Genworth has something called the cost of care, and you just Google Genworth cost of care, and you'll come to the site where you can dial in specific numbers for your zip code and look at them either on a daily or a monthly or quarterly or an annual basis. Uh, this is a snapshot from an annual average across the United States. And you can see across the range of care, whether it's uh, in, you know, 
homemaker services, in-home kinds of care, or adult daycare, health care, or assisted living facility, or full-blown nursing home, you can see the range of annual expenses and the rapidity or the speed at which those charges have been growing year over year. So if you take all these numbers in aggregate and you average them out, you're really looking at a potential of about $70,000 a year coming out of a client's portfolio to pay for a potential event. So we don't want the family and friends doing it. We recognize that professional care is really expensive. Okay, John, I hear you, but what's really the risk? Well, the risk is pretty high. We've seen these statistics uh, confirmed time and time again, about 70% of all Americans age 65 and older are going to need some form of long-term care. So it's not so much a question as if, so much as a question of when will the long-term care event happen and how is the client going to plan for that and, uh, and be able to deal with it. Here's another sobering statistic that in spite of these numbers, the, the sheer numbers of Americans that are providing care currently, the knowledge of the growing uh, business of being able to provide professional long-term care, the fact that so many people are gonna need it, really only about 70% of Americans age 50 and older currently have any kind of long-term care coverage. And when you really get down to it, and we look at the surveys that have been made time and time again, right now, this is the number one concern for retirees and pre-retirees as they're preparing for their golden years as we move ahead. So recap again, we've got old non-qualified annuities with big massive deferred gains as bird number one. Bird number two is the long-term care conundrum. How are we going to deal with that? How are we going to plan for this with our clients? And the answer comes in the form of the stone. So what is our stone? Very simply, one of the ways that we can fix this is to 1035 exchange an existing non-qualified annuity into a long-term care annuity. What does that look like? Very simply, we have our old annuity that we illustrated before, cost basis and deferred gain built up into it. It might be a variable annuity, it might be a fixed annuity or an indexed annuity, doesn't matter. We 1035 exchange that into a new long-term care annuity, and that contract maintains the same valuation as the original one, but it gets leveraged up with the long-term care benefit pool. That benefit pool can then, when the client can no longer perform two out of six activities of daily living, be used to pay out tax-free long-term care. So be able to tap into that pool and, and help to be able to uh, defer some of those expenses. What this is actually doing is it's solving one of the planning problems of long-term care and taking that deferred gain and basically washing that gain completely free of income taxes for the client and allowing them to repurpose an asset that they really don't have need for right now and be able to get more leverage and more use out of that same asset. Now, so that's the basic idea. Let me just give you an example of a real life case that we worked on at U4 here. And I've stripped all the information that's pertinent to the client off of this so uh, to protect the innocent and the guilty here. But the main point is this, if we take a look, this was a client who was about 69 years old, uh, who had an old nationwide variable annuity. And you can see if you look detailed on this statement, copy that we had that they invested back in 2004 about $130,000. This was actually an exchange from a previous annuity. So the cost basis truly was $100,000 originally. They exchanged in and brought in $130,000. And over the course since 2004 to the last quarter, it grew to an account value of about $312,000. So there's that example, right? $100,000 cost basis now worth $312,000. So they have a substantial deferred gain built up into this. Now, here was a challenge for the advisor because the advisor looked at this and said, well, we really can't do anything with this annuity because they have this living benefit on it. This is a lifetime withdrawal benefit. And not only is the account value you know, way higher than it was before, but look at where the value is on that living benefit, 350,000. And my client is able to pull 18,000 a year from it for life. And I asked the question very simply, yes, but is your client actually taking that money out? And the answer was no, they're not going to. So I said, so you have a $350,000 benefit that they are probably never going to use. Is that correct? And the answer was right. Yeah, they're not planning on ever using this money. Well, 
We did a little analysis on that. On this particular contract, this client is paying about 3.7% all in on the fees on this contract, or about $12,000 a year for a benefit that they are not using. So we suggested to this particular advisor and the client that they take this contract and exchange it into a long-term care annuity. Now, there are many different kinds of uh, products that are out there, and we're not really looking at any one particular carrier versus another. But in this particular example, we use Global Atlantic's four care fixed annuity with a long-term care benefit on it. And this is the illustration for that client. And as you can see, we took that 312,000, we put it in to this product, and that bought immediately a guaranteed long-term care benefit pool of 953,000 and change which enables them to take a maximum monthly benefit of 13,246. So these are the guaranteed values, as you can see. Now, there's an illustrated value as well that's, that takes some hypotheticals. And so if you take a look at that, you see that the same benefit accrues at the outset of the contract. But when a long-term care event is likely to happen sometime around age 80, you can see that the benefits based on the performance of the contract have actually performed a little bit better. And they've got, uh, in this case, at around age 80, a benefit pool of about $1.1 million or $15,000 a month, which would help them to defray the costs of a long-term care event. And if you look at this a little bit further down to the bottom of it, the, the question comes up about, well, what if my client never actually uses this annuity uh, or doesn't need these long-term care benefits or they don't have a long-term care event? Well, what happens then? Well, remember that you still have the account value that has been growing over a period of time, but you also have a death benefit, in which case there's a benefit now that it can accrue and pass on to the beneficiaries, in this case, in this example, of about $463,000 that passed to the family if this contract were in fact not used. So gives the client some flexibility, allows them to repurpose the asset, get some leverage, and be able to get some tax efficiency out of that uh, deferred gain that they'd experienced over the past several years. So as a quick recap, let's just remind you where we've been. Bird one is this idea that we have unused and unneeded non-quality or non-qualified annuities. Uh, they're a cost or a fee challenge and a tax challenge for many clients. We also have the other issue that most clients aren't prepared for the long-term care, the likely long-term care event that may be coming down the road for them. So how can we help to prepare them for that? Let's use this stone uh, and solve the two bird challenge by 1035 exchanging these old annuities for healthcare leverage and tax advantage outcomes. So that's my idea for you for the day. I'll pause at the moment and I will take any questions that anybody might have and uh, open up the mic to myself as the host. So what do we have in the way of questions? Let's see here. I gotta see if I can actually get to the chat. Uh, so the question comes from uh, Lenora, can we only 1035 non-qualified funds? So uh, in the product that we just illustrated in this case, the answer is yes, it can only be non-qualified funds. However, there are some carriers and for example, one of them is One America that has a product that does effectively allow you to take qualified assets and, and buy a long-term care policy from that as well. It gets into a little bit of detail in the technicalities of how you go about doing that. It's not exactly a tax-free exchange, but it does allow you to, to use qualified assets to be able to get the same kind of leverage that we illustrated with the uh, Global Atlantic product. And if there are any other questions from the audience, I see, don't see any at the moment and nothing in the chat. So I will thank you all for having taken the time to listen to this. And I, uh, I have to go back to put my, my host hat on here for a moment. And I see that uh, I'm supposed to pick a number. And my number today is 13, because that's the date that I was born on. And let me see who we have as our winner. 13, 13, 13. 13 is Derek Layton. So Derek, congratulations. You have won a 
prize that includes a, a CE gift card or CE voucher, as well as a Starbucks gift card. So be on the lookout for that in your email and we'll get those gifts out to you shortly. We do want to thank you for attending today and remind you that we were, do the brew every Wednesday at noon live. And all of these sessions are also recorded and posted up to our YouTube channel at E4 uh, Insurance Services. You can just Google YouTube, uh, dash E4 Insurance Services channel, and you will be able to get all the entire library of over a hundred of these videos that we've done in recent months. Um, we look forward to seeing you again next week on The Brew. Thanks for coming today. Have a great afternoon.